What's going on guys and welcome back to Mikey's Vlogs. I know I've been gone for a while, but due to life, work and extenuating circumstances, I haven't been able to release any videos lately, but rest assured I am back. I will be releasing more videos and more content for you guys. So I hope you guys will stay tuned, follow along, and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Now, for this video, I wanna show you guys how to remove the rear tail lights of your Mercedes-Benz W204. And in the process, I'm also going to show you guys how to remove your backing plate and replace your rear tail light bulbs as well. So, let's get into it. The first thing you wanna do when it comes to removing your tail lights is, Go to the back area, pop up your boot, and figure out which side you're going to remove first, whether it be right or left. For this video, I'm going to be removing the back right hand side. Now the left side is going to be exactly the same, it's just there'll be other things in the way, but getting to your nuts are going to be exactly the same. So, first thing you wanna do is remove this uh, back carpet plate and simply pull it straight out. Once you get to here, the first thing you wanna do is locate your tail lights connector harness and you will see a tab on both sides I'll show you in just a second and what you want to do is press on both sides and then wiggle it out and pull it straight out as you can see right here you have a tab on both sides that you need to press on in order to release it and then pull it straight out now the next thing you want to do here is locate on this light gray piece where the tabs are in order to release it. There's one at the top and then there's one at the bottom. I'll show you in just a second once I release it. Okay, so there we have it, it's released now. Now, for the cars that have a LED light for the turn signals, you cannot just pull this straight out. There are two other cables that you need to release in order to remove this backing plate completely. Okay, now I'm just going to turn it over so I can show you guys. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if you just look in there, you can see that there is a blue cable and a red cable still connected to the backing plate. You need to remove these in order to be able to remove the backing plate. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so you just grab on it and pull back. That's one, it's the blue one, and there's the red one as well. There we go. Now you have your backing plate removed. So, this is what I was talking about just before, okay? You have a tab here and a tab at the bottom here. In order to remove this, what you wanna do is press down on the one above and press up on the one at the bottom, and then it will release. You don't have to press them at the same time. You can simply press one at a time and it will release. Okay guys, now that we have this backing plate removed for your tail lights, I want to show you quickly how to replace your rear tail light bulbs. Now this is a very simple thing to do. So, as you can see here, you have your brake lights, indicators, reverse light and parking lights. So, the only bulb that is different here is your parking light, which is a W5W. If you have a look at this top corner here, you'll actually see W5W. And as for these other bulbs, if you look next to them, you'll see P21W, which is the reference for that type of bulb. So if you're ever confused about what type of bulb you need in order to replace that type of light, then it will tell you on your backing plate. So as you can see here, it is P21W. Now, as you can see here, there is a bulb missing here. This reason being, and this is a different bulb also. Now, the reason why this bulb is missing is because the model I have has LED for the indicators. So they don't use this for the indicator, they simply use an LED strip. So that's why I don't have a bulb here. Now, if you, have, if you don't have LEDs for your indicators, then I'm pretty sure you're going to have a bulb here. Now, as you can see, all the bulbs pretty much remove the same, except for this parking light here. In order to remove this, you just have to pull straight out on it and then simply replace it once again. Push it straight in and there you go. That's how you replace your parking light. As you can see, I've already changed mine to LED. I've also changed my reverse light to an LED because I have a reverse camera. I wanted a brighter light, so I replaced it to an LED bulb. It, it replaces exactly the same. All you have to do is push on it, turn it, rotate it left, and it simply comes out. So if you have a look at your bulb, it has prongs on both sides and it has the the uh, negative terminal right here 
what you have to do in order to replace it is line it up with the tabs with the grooves um, of your light and then simply push in and rotate clockwise to your right and it's exactly the same for all the bulbs you simply push in and rotate left to release it and in order to replace it you simply push in and rotate right and that's it that's how easy it is to replace your tail light bulbs guys so if you need to replace any bulbs I suggest you do so it's a very simple fix okay so now let's get into removing the tail light and now that we have the backing plate removed and these two wires unplugged in order to remove your rear tail light there are four eight mil nuts that you need to remove in order to remove the rear tail light okay so there's one here there's one up here and there's another one just behind this panel and also another one all the way over here these three are very easy to get to the only one that you might have a little trouble getting to is the one right here now this is going to be have to be done by feel because you cannot really get to it unless you want to remove this whole rear carpet panel just to get to that bolt but I'm telling you now that you do not have to do that one thing that can help you out is to remove this clip right here there's a clip right here let me show you real quick you see this clip right here you can remove this carpet clip in order to give you more room but I'm going to show you that you don't need to remove anything in order to get to it I like to just use a little quarter inch and a little extension you don't even need the extension and use this to release the bolts I'm going to start with this one here okay just loop, just break it free and loosen it by hand and then release the rest by hand okay I'm going to release the top one up here it's loose and then there is another one just up here so I just do it by feel now as I pretty much know where the bolt is so I just put my hand in there get it on the bolt and then begin to loosen there we go just break it free and then you can simply release it by by, thing, by hand there we go okay now that they're all loose for this last bolt just to show you that you do not need a ratchet or any tool to release it all you're trying to do is break it loose and then once it's loose you can release it by by hand so all I do here is I get a 8 mil spanner I find the bolt by feel get it around it and then simply break it free okay there we go I believe that's broken loose now and now okay so now For this last bolt here, just to make it easier, what I'm going to do is remove this carpet clip in order to give me more room, okay? Now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you anyway so that if you're uncomfortable getting in there, doing it by feel and you want to see it a bit more, then remove this carpet clip. And then all you have to do now is get in there, get your ratchet eight mil and your socket, get it on the bolt, Okay, there we go, and then begin. Okay, there we go, and now you can uh, loosen it. Okay, and there we go, I think I've got that broken loose. Now that it is loose, I can simply remove it by hand. Careful not to drop your nuts in there. Do it real slowly as you get towards the end so that you do not drop your bolt, your nut. Okay, there we go. It's almost to the end now. I do not want to lose this nut. Remember, they are all 8 mil nuts. So if you're removing a nut that's not 8 mil, then stop and make sure you're removing the right nut. And there we go, guys. That's one 8 mil nut removed. Now, just to remove the other 8 mil nuts so there's one here remember just here remove that two one at the top corner here 
this will be three and finally one up the top again right up here in this top corner okay just releasing it by hand now as you've already broken it loose okay and there we go guys one two three four now as for this um, bigger nut here that one simply goes in the top corner here and now that we have all the nuts removed and this rear tail light assembly is loose what you want to do here is go to the top hand corner bolt and push it out okay like so and then push on all the other bolts so that you can release it slowly okay and once you release it slowly you can simply remove it okay so here we go just going to give it a little wiggle now what you want to do in order to remove the light is get this part out first as the bolt goes in sideways all the other bolts go in straight so you want to release this one first before you release the rest so you want to release that and then simply pull straight out and there you go guys that's how you remove your rear tail light assembly. So what I was trying to explain earlier is, as you can see this bolt, it goes in sideways. So it sits in like that. So you wanna release this bolt first before you pull it straight out. And that's it. There you go guys, how you remove the rear tail light assembly of your Mercedes Benz W204. As I was explaining earlier, the reason why you need to be careful if you have LED turn signals is because your turn signals now run off an LED light. It does not run off a halogen bulb like a normal, like a normal car would. So you have to be careful that once you remove your backing plate, you need to disconnect these before you remove your backing plate completely. And that's all there is to it, guys. That's how you remove the rear tail light of your Mercedes Benz W204. It's that easy guys. Now we're going to put everything back together and I'm going to show you guys step by step how you would do that. So what you want to do here now is line it up. Make sure that this rubber flap is sitting over the tail light. Line it up. Make sure all your bolts are lined up with the correct holes and then push it in so it's seated properly. Then once you've done this, we can begin to put the nuts back on so it holds it in place. Okay, now that we have the tail light lined up, remember that the bigger nut goes onto the top corner bolt. So we just start everything by hand just to get it all on there. Okay, get it just a little bit snug but not tight. And then we can get the other bolts, the other nuts on. Remember, just tight, just um, do it by hand first, and then once you get it snug, you can then use a tool to tighten it down. Okay, there's another one in this top corner here. Be careful not to drop your nuts now. Do everything slowly. Have a bit of patience. Do not try to rush it because you will drop the nut. And that's the last thing you want to do as it's very hard to get them out again. Okay, now that I have these three in already, I'm going to tighten these three down first. Make sure you are happy with how your light is how your light is assembled make sure it's in the perfect spot and then you can begin to tighten down your bolts your nuts sorry okay I'm just gonna do this by feel so I'm not in the way of the camera that's one in tighten down okay now for that second here we are just here tighten this one down tight and then for the one in the top corner here and we'll get up here and we'll begin to tighten this down okay remember you just want to tighten it by hand so once you get your ratchet on there or whatever tool you're using you only have to do a couple more turns in order to get it down there we are nice and snug Okay, and now we have the last one right here. Okay, so like I said, in order to make this easier, 
you remove that carp you get that carpet clip and then reach on in remember do this real slowly you do not want to drop your nut as it's going to be very hard to get it out again as there are some really tight gaps in there okay start it off by hand get it in there as much as you can once you've done that then just grab your socket and ratchet again get it on there and begin to tighten and there we go and that's snug you do not want to over tighten it you do not have to tighten it to the point where you're about to strip it just tighten it so it's snug and now that you have your light back in place and you're happy with how it's seated next thing you need to do is now plug back in these two connectors for your turn signals now remember if you don't have LED turn signals you don't have to worry about this step I believe correct me if I'm wrong okay so now if you have a look at your backing plate you're going to see a thicker prong and a thinner one the thicker one is for the red one and the thinner one is for the blue one you can't get these wrong because from the size of the connector there's a thick one and a thinner one so they can only go one way now it's just a matter of maneuvering it and getting it on there okay so this is how I do it it is a bit of a, a fiddle to get it on but rest assured that you can do it just be very careful not to try and extend the cable too much as you can rip it off the LED uh, circuit that it's connected to okay what I like to do here is get it as close as possible and then just get it to fit on okay this is what I like to do I get the red one on first as it's a longer uh, as it's a longer one I know it's a bit of a um, fiddle but uh, rest assured that you can do this okay now I'm just trying to get the blue one back on it is a bit of a fiddle okay and there we go the blue one is back on there we go okay and there we have it guys now this is probably the best way to do it as you can see okay so now this would probably be the best way to do it have your plate facing this way and then plug them in make sure that they are securely plugged in so that they do work if you have an error message for some reason this would be the reason why your indicators won't work if you do not plug these in okay and then from here it's just a very simple plug in ensure that your blue and red wires are properly are properly seated you do not want them getting in the way and then simply line up your light bulbs and plug them straight back in till you hear a little click and there you have it guys and then lastly grab your connector harness it can only go in one way with the tabs facing up and put it back in and plug it straight back in and you are done simply grab your carpet cover if you look down here you see these two slits here that's exactly where these two slits sit into so you put them in there push your carpet back in and then turn it counterclockwise and there you have it guys everything should look exactly like it did before look at that flush equal nothing protruding everything should sit in flush and nice just like it and equal as well there should not be a bigger gap anywhere else everything should sit symmetrical and there you have it guys how to remove and reinstall the rear tail lights of your mercedes-benz w204 before i leave you 
there is something that I wanted to inform you about as a W204 owner, and that is a major common fault with the W204s. Now, I'm not sure how it is for the later models. However, I am sure that for the earlier models, they had this problem. And this major common fault with the W204 is how the grounding wire for your rear tail light harness is susceptible to melting and causing a little fire. And the reason this happens is due to the fact that they have used such such a small wire for the grounding of the rear tail light assembly that what can happen over time is it heats up and as we know with heat in electrical if the cable isn't thick enough and it isn't able to handle the amount of current that is running through that wire or cable then it gets very hot and what happens is in extremely hot weather or over a long period of time it can heat up and cause a little fire or even melt causing an inconsistent connection and therefore giving you symptoms such as a dimmer tail light compared to the other one or even throwing error messages onto your dash so as a w204 owner we should all be aware of this therefore if we are having any symptoms of a dimmer tail light or error messages on the dash even though you've just changed out your bulb to a new light bulb but you're still getting an error message be sure to check your grounding wire and your rear tail light connector harness if for some reason it looks like it has started to melt or you're getting an inconsistent connection due to melting or a disconnection then be sure to check that out we should all know this as a W204 owner, therefore we can try and source the problem without throwing money or parts at the car hoping to solve it when it really is a case of a common fault with the W204. So I really wanted to share this with you guys to make you guys aware of this issue so that if you're ever having any problems related to this then be sure to check this before doing anything else such as checking fuses and so forth. So as you can see here, here's a picture of the cable harness for your rear tail light. And then as you can see here, the, it, it has melted. And as you can see here, the, even the backing plate has melted also. And it just can cause melting in general because the cable gets so hot. Now, I don't know why Mercedes has gone with such a thin cable when it comes to grounding the whole tail light assembly, but there is a simple fix for this. And what you can do here is simply splice your grounding cable and then ground it to another point of the car. But also, the most important thing to remember here is to use a thicker gauge wire so that it can handle more current and more amperage. Something like a 15 amp wire would do and simply ground it to another point of the car and you will never have this problem. Just another tip is also to be sure that if you are concerned about this cable heating up and melting on you, make sure that you check it on long drives. Go to the back of your car after a long drive and touch the brown ground wire of your rear tail light connector. If it happens to be extremely hot or getting really hot, then you know that this problem may eventuate into the cable melting so i just wanted to make you guys aware of this and um, i hope this video helps you out if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and as always don't forget to like share comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video this is mike with mikey's vlogs signing off